So today we're going to look at one of the most interesting nerve conditions in the upper limb and that is cubital tunnel syndrome. We're going to show you 3D anatomy, we're going to talk you through the clinical signs, we're going to talk you through how to assess and treat it. So let's dive in. Hey guys, Khaled here. Welcome back to Clinical Physio. So there's only one place for us to start when it comes to cubital tunnel syndrome and that is with our 3D anatomy model. So the nerves of the upper limb, where does the ulnar nerve actually start? Well, it's one of the terminal branches of the brachial plexus, which is the major network of nerve fibers that effectively creates the neural system for most of the nerves within the arm. Now, the ulnar nerve exits out of the brachial plexus, as we can see here, and then it runs down the medial or inner side of the arm towards the elbow. At that point, it reaches a very interesting structure which is here. And this, of course, is the cubital tunnel. So we can see that this tunnel is made up of the medial epicondyle and the olecranon. Now, if you want to find this on yourself, if you bend your elbow to 90 degrees and have your hand or your palm facing towards you, so supination, you'll be able to feel the very bony point at the back of the elbow, which is the olecranon, and then if you work your finger to the medial side or the inner side of the elbow, you'll feel the other main bony prominence, and that is the medial epicondyle. So therefore, the small bit in between there is the cubital tunnel. It's a little bit squishy, a little bit softer, and that's where the ulnar nerve runs into. Now, if you ever bang your elbow, it will compress that part of the cubital tunnel and you get that tingly feeling in your arm where they suggest that you hit your funny bone. That's where your ulnar nerve gets compressed in that moment of the impact and where it can feel really itchy and horrible and fizzy. So that's the cubital tunnel and effectively it's really important to know where it is because it's in this particular tunnel that the ulnar nerve can get compressed which leads to neural symptoms associated with cubital tunnel syndrome. Now, what are those symptoms? Well, if we track the nerve further, we can see that it runs down the medial side of the arm further, down the ulna bone, as the name of this nerve would suggest, running down towards the medial side of the hand. Now, here we can see how some of the nerve fibers split off towards the thumb, and that's why we can get issues with the thumb muscles with cubital tunnel syndrome, but we can also see how the main nerves run towards the fourth and fifth digits, so the fourth digit and the fifth digits here. And this is particularly key because when it comes to cubital tunnel syndrome, the most consistent symptoms that patients will get is pain, numbness, pins and needles at the ulnar side of the forearm and into those fourth and fifth digits. So now you know why that is. And it's a brilliant example of how the anatomy relates directly to clinical practice. So with that in mind, let's quickly recap some of the key common signs and symptoms that your patients will present with. Well, cubital tunnel, as we've seen, is a nerve problem. Therefore, we're expecting nerve-related symptoms, particularly in the medial or ulnar side of the forearm and the fourth and fifth digits of the hand. So those nerve symptoms could be pain, pins and needles, numbness, or perhaps even weakness, particularly in those fourth and fifth digits. What kind of pain? Well, a nerve pain is going to be either fizzing, a burning, perhaps an electrical shooting nature is what we commonly find with these neurological conditions. And we're also expecting them to talk about some of the difficulties they have in their subject of assessment. They might be finding it difficult to grip things. They may be finding it difficult with certain hand tasks and functions. So listen out for those kind of things. So are there any clinical tests that we can use? Absolutely. And the most common and probably the easiest one to replicate in practice is Tinell's test. Now, Tinell's test can be used at anywhere in the body where we tap on a particular nerve for around 60 seconds to see if it reproduces our patient's symptoms. And that's exactly what we do with cubital tunnel syndrome. We find the cubital tunnel where we said earlier between the medial epicondyle and the olecranon. We find that soft, squishy bit and then we simply tap for around about 60 seconds to see if it reproduces those nerve-based symptoms into the medial forearm and into the fourth and fifth fingers. Now, one other key symptom I wanted to talk to you about 
out in the physical examination is wasting. Now, this may not be the case with all of your cubital tunnel patients, but it might be the case with the more significant ones. And that's because when that nerve is really, really compressed, it means that the signal from the nerve isn't getting through to the muscle and then we start to get wasting. That's a really important sign and if left for the long term it could lead to long term damage so we need to keep an eye on this. So where should we be looking for wasting? Well in particular we might look at the thena eminence of the hand. This is on the thumb side, the little padded area here because some of the muscles that operate the thumb are supplied by the ulnar nerve. The other area is the hypothena eminence. This is on the fifth digit or the medial side of the hand. So we might look for it there. But then the other key area is in between some of the fingers. Now you might find that with your really severe patients, they lose that padding in between the fingers. And we sometimes call that guttering because it looks as if it creates a gutter effect between the fingers. So if you see these symptoms, we must alert either a neurologist or an orthopaedic surgeon quickly so they can investigate it and see if there is a need for surgery to decompress the ulnar nerve so that the nerve can get back to supplying the muscles again. And there are other neurological tests we can use. Things like Wartenberg sign where your patient is unable to adduct their fifth finger. There's things like ulnar claw, which is a resting position of the hand in this position, where you find that the fourth and fifth digits sit in this rested flex position. Or there's Fromont sign, which is where our patient is unable to hold a piece of paper in between their thumb and their index finger. Now, there's a lot of explaining to do with all those tests, but don't worry, we've done a full video for you called Hand Neuropathy Signs Explained. Check that out in the description below. Make sure you watch it if you want to know more about those tests. So, how do we treat it as physiotherapists? Well, the honest answer is that in the physiotherapy world, our role is relatively limited. The evidence shows that the simple things like avoiding aggravating factors and referring to our patient's doctor for medication such as non-steroidal anti-inflammatories or even some nerve-based painkillers should really do the trick. There's some debate about using slide and glide exercises, but Unfortunately, the evidence doesn't really show us that they're that useful, but that's okay. Even if as physiotherapists, our main role is to simply advise, we should find that most patient symptoms settle at around about the six week mark, if not earlier. So that's good news. However, there are two things that we really can do as physios. The first is getting really good at diagnosing this condition, being familiar with the anatomy, the common signs, and some of the tests that we've talked about in this video. And secondly, and really crucially, is to look out for the signs that our patient has a progressing cubital tunnel syndrome condition, i.e. if they're getting that wasting, if they're losing that motor power, if they're dropping things, because it's really important that these patients are referred on to a neurologist or an orthopedic surgeon as quickly as possible. So as physios, if we're aware of it, we can really help our patients if that happens. So if you want more on Cubital Tunnel, check out our premium membership, link in the description below. We've got loads of brilliant resources, including webinar tutorials such as common elbow conditions and wrist and elbow differential diagnosis, as well as a full article on Cubital Tunnel Syndrome. Once again, that's our premium membership, link in the description below. But otherwise, I really hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please support us by smashing that like button, subscribe to our channel, and check out more of our resources on Instagram at Clinical Physio. My name's Khalid. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon here on Clinical Physio.